I guess I should, I guess I should start. Well, I think everybody knows me, but I'm Priscilla Abercrombie. I'm the chair of the board for Coke Builder Institute in the county. Uh, we're trying to do a little bit better job of introducing ourselves and starting the meetings because all of our meetings will be on YouTube. Um, so if you miss a meeting for some reason and you want to go back and take a gander at it, we fortunately have, um, Diana has been helping us with that. Diana Borges is, is um, taking on a lot of the communications responsibilities that I had. Um, so uh, she will have those on our YouTube channel. And if you look at our YouTube channel, you'll notice that there's different playlists. And the playlist that says Cook Leadership Meetings is where you're going to look. But you should check it out. She's done a really great job of um, connecting us with some um, partners to do really great educational videos around preparedness. So great resource for your community um, as well. So let's go ahead and get started. You know me, I like to start our meetings on time and I see that it's 3.30. So welcome everyone. Um, we'll start with some announcements, um, and I know we've got some new board members that are going to introduce themselves. Um, I think uh, I will make Marshall a co-host so that he can share his screen. Um, Anybody else need a screen? Oh, and we have Nathan Gilfenbaum here today. Is that fun or what? We have not seen that face for a while. It's very great. great. Very excited about that. Welcome. Thanks. All right. Thanks. So, so yeah. Nathan, I, I look forward to you talking more about the co-ed in just the, in a few minutes. So uh, again, welcome everyone. I see you all trickling in. Glad to see your faces on my screen. It's getting, the gallery is getting closer and closer. You're getting smaller and smaller. You know how that goes, right? Oh, great, Karen Hancock, so glad you're here. Um, so we do have somebody to introduce themselves. Karen, tell us about your new role and let people know what you're up to. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Priscilla. Hi, Judith. I see you know, other hands waving. I, I recognize some faces here. Um, my name's Karen Hancock. I am the new community outreach specialist with Sonoma County Fire District formerly community services officer with the Sonoma County Sheriff's Office. So uh, jumped over to the fireside and I'm excited to get to be with all of you lovely folks a little bit more in depth um, now, uh, more with the fire focus than before with the crime prevention side. So excited about that. Um, I'm excited to be here today and I'm also excited uh, to tap into your expertise because I was just at another meeting um, talking about grants and possibly working on a USDA um, CWPP grant. So I know that somebody here has probably written one or worked on one of those projects, and I would love to be able to chat with you maybe outside of this meeting um, a little bit further to help me out with some of that as I dive into that process here real soon. Great. Great. Yes. And I was going to raise, thank you, Karen, and, and welcome. Um, and we're, we're really glad to have you here. It's, re it's really wonderful. And um, it's nice you know a little bit about us already, so it's not completely new. Um, so yes, we'll talk more about that grant a little bit later because we are interested in applying as well for um, just to talk about CWPPs really quickly. Um, there are a, a number of Coke communities that have been involved in developing their own CWPPs. As you know, the county is working on redoing theirs from 2016. Um, so the whole county is covered um, if, if they want to apply for this grant. And I think many of us want to apply. So I think that we should all kind of 
figure out the best strategies so that we can support each other and um, do it in a way that we increase our ability to get funded um, for whatever we're looking for. So um, just off the top of my head, CWPPs have been done for Fitch Mountain, Northeast Geyserville. Uh oh, Marshall, you need to help me. I'm forgetting. Um, Franz Valley, uh, uh, Knights Valley is working on it, right? And so is Lake Sonoma working on it. Mill Creek. And, and Mill Creek. Yep. And then Cloverdale should be getting signed off soon, too. It's actually oh, soon. Wow, that was fast. It's actually Great. been signed off already. Okay. It, it got published uh, a couple days ago. And the map is out on the website. All right. So I hope that helps, Karen. Um, yeah. And if you want copies of any of that stuff, I'm, I'm sure we'd be more than happy to share. Absolutely. And I'm going to put my contact information in the chat here in just a moment. So um, everyone, please write that down and reach out to me too. Great. Thanks, Karen. All right. Um, I have one quick announcement from Fred Peterson. Um, he wasn't able to attend today, but he wanted you all to know that on September 7th, uh, we are on the LAFCO agenda for our annexation. Drum roll, please, again. Um, I hope that this time we get our final approval. We're very excited about that possibility for the reorganization of Northern Sonoma County Fire Protection District, which will encompass um, three of our code communities, Fitch Mountain, Dry Creek, Mill Creek, and um, the Geysers as well. Uh, so um, he is asking for letters of support to be sent to LAFCO, and I still need to get details about what those letters would look like and who they get sent to. So you'll get more information on that from me forthcoming. Um, but yes, it's uh, very exciting, many years in the making, uh, many more years way before um, COPE that this has been in the making. So I'm sure that the district is very excited about it. Um, the other announcement that he had was that um, the Geyserville Volunteer Firefighters Association will be sending the check for $10,000 to COPE. So many, many thanks to um, the association for doing that and um, for allowing us to participate in um, the One Country to the Rescue event. Um, that was really fantastic. And um, it's always nice for a nonprofit to have non-restricted funds to be able to do the things that we need to do to support the, you know, the, the goings on of our organizations and not have them necessarily earmarked for a grant. So this is a real blessing for us to have this kind of money. So we thank them very much. Um, any other announcements people wanna make? Um, just a minor one. Um, Mill Creek is uh, coming up on the two year anniversary of the Walbridge fire. We're having a very informal gathering and Healdsburg at uh, Coyote Sonoma uh, between four and seven on Friday, just for people um, to gather and reconnect after COVID and a bit of, uh, we lost a few hundred residents uh, during the fire. And, um, so that's happening. And we're also working with uh, Jeff Peters and others to um, try and install some, uh, a fire alert camera automated camera with Jeff's help in the counties. And um, that's probably about it for Mill Creek other than wrapping up a lot of fuel break work. Great, thank you for that. Yes, um, I will be talking about where we are with all of our different grants um, in, in just a few minutes. Um, I want to take the opportunity to introduce um, Jeanette Pantoja. Um, she is the uh, director of the Sonoma County Co-Ed. She's new in her position. She's only been in it for about three weeks. Oh, I see Diane Butcher has her hand raised. But hold on just a second, Jeanette. We'll... Diane, did you have an announcement? Thank you. Yes, I just wanted to say that uh, Westside Cope had our annual meeting um, 
excuse me, on Sunday, we had a, a pretty good a good turnout of, of 40 homeowners um, and just want to thank uh, Marshall for attending and speaking on defensible space. Um, also with him was Paul Fleckenstein and um, the new fire marshal in Healdsburg, Lance McDonald. And also John Clark Mills spoke about walk duty and the next phases that they're going to be going through. So I just want to uh, just kind of shout out a little appreciation to, to Marshall for, for helping out and everybody else. So. Great. Good on you, Diane. I'm glad that you, that meeting went well and um, really encourage everyone to have their annual meetings. And now's a good time for it, right? People can meet outside and um, be safe COVID wise and feel more comfortable. So thank you for that. All right, Jeanette, I'm sorry we were interrupted probably because I didn't see a hand raised, I apologize. So Jeanette, please tell us a bit about your your role in the COAD and what the COAD's up to. Um, she and I met, so we, you know, she, she knows a bit about COAD um, and we talked about how we might work together and, and how um, we can support each other's work. So Jeanette, I will turn it over to you. Hi everybody, good afternoon. Um, so again, my name is Jeanette Pantoja. I am the new director of the Sonoma County Co-Ad. Um, I'm also joined today by, by Nathan, who um, is a former member of this leadership team and is on our governance team and has a lot more institutional knowledge. So if you have questions, he's he's here to, to support me in answering those questions. So COAD, for those that are unfamiliar, stands for um, Community Organizations Active in Disaster. Um, and it's existed in the county for a number of years, but really mobilized in response to the 2017 fires. And as someone who is new to the role and new to the coalition, I'm really grateful for all of the work that's occurred since then. And definitely the, the coalition has evolved in response to successive fires after that and the pandemic um, and other events. Um, so uh, COAD is a coalition of community organizations, nonprofits, um, service providers, and public agencies that um, through COAD communicate, collaborate, um, exchange best practices and support in relation to uh, disasters and emergencies. Uh, and folks kind of do this work in, in uh, preparation for a disaster. So through preparedness, uh, through response and through recovery. And we have about 40 members, but um, many more folks that are uh, informally involved by attending meetings or events. Um, things that we've done historically is um, activate in response to disasters. So we have uh, now three liaisons that sit within the EOC and provide exchange information. So we take information from the nonprofit community and communicate that to the EOC during a disaster event. And similarly, um, communicate out information to the, the nonprofit community. Uh, we work on developing training and other capacity building opportunities for community organizations within the network. And, um, you know, in the last month that I've been in the role, have seen the extent to which COAD is a trusted partner of the county and um, is consulted on things such as kind of uh, shelter preparation um, and, uh, you know, most recently asked us to review kind of the intake forms in order to identify service needs for folks showing up at shelter. Um, we've been active and coordinating around recovery post-disaster. Um, I'll invite Nathan to see. Nathan, will, will you please fill in if there's anything else that you think is important to emphasize at this time? We did a very good job summarizing it, Jeanette. I would just add from the perspective of long-term recovery, which is the, the other aspect of what the COAD does both here in, um, in Sonoma County and I'm also involved in Napa County, um, we are still working with survivors of the 2020 fires, helping them to recover. Um, there were over um, 
800 people on the caseload in Sonoma County after the fires and about 325 people in Napa County. We're down to the last few folks, but that work has taken two years. And um, we've been um, very, we're very fortunate in this part of the state, um, not only as Jeanette said, to have our um, collaboration with community groups such as this and the Department of Emergency Management, but to have the support of a very well-funded community foundation. And in some of these other counties, particularly in the Sierra, that were hit very hard last year with the, the, um, the Caldor fire and the Dixie fire, they don't have that kind of support. And so it, it's a very different situation out there. Um, you know, um, we just keep getting, trying to keep getting better at what we do. We had a, a very interesting um, activation, tabletop activation exercise a few weeks ago. We learned a lot about some of the gaps in our activation plan and we're in the process now of trying to fill them and figure out how we can make our response more um, comprehensive and timely and um, and um, um, hopefully we won't be in the EOC this year, but if we are, we're ready to meet that role and, and, and the challenge that it provides. So, um, you know, I, I just am very thankful for community groups like this. I think when it comes to preparedness, um, apart from individual households, the fact that people are coming together in neighborhoods and in communities to prepare and to support one another is just so important. So always a pleasure to be here and see you all. Thanks, Nathan um, and Jeanette. Thank you very much. Jeanette, could you talk a little bit about, or maybe Nathan as well, about how you um, think that COPE and the COAD could work together? What role do you see COPE having? Well, I'll just say one, um, share one thing that you and I talked about, Priscilla. So, um, you know, there there wasn't an activation in 2021, hopefully won't need to have an activation this year as well. And so that leaves a lot of other time to work on, um, a, you know, thinking through preparedness and, and recovery. Um, and something that I'm very interested in and have experience with um, having worked uh, mostly on the East Coast. I'm originally from Monterey County, but I've been doing coalition work for about 10 years. And my real passion is on, on creating capacity building opportunities for coalitions. And so you have um, you know, leaders um, throughout North County um, and identifying what are some training or capacity building opportunities that they're interested in that we as co-ed could help develop and deliver and um, partner with you all. Great, great, thank you. And um, one of the benefits of being involved in the co-ed from um, my understanding, um, Jeanette, is that communication, right? We get information because we're part of the co-ed, that there's good communication, bi-directional communication. So we have a way of letting folks in the EOC know what the problems are on the ground. Um, and then we also can get information from the EOC about what's happening. Is that correct? Correct. Nathan, do you wanna say a little bit maybe about how that's worked in the past or? Well, um, you know, our, our first um, um, hint in the EOC was in the Kincaid fire in 2019. Nancy, Nancy Brown, who's here, was instrumental in helping us get a seat in the EOC and is sort of our uh, fairy godmother. She always looks out for us in the EOC and we, uh, we appreciate that, Nancy. Um, uh, you know, when I first got there that first year, um, people were looking at me like, who are you and what is the co-ed and what do you do and why are you here? And, and I just sort of kept my head down and listened and took notes and sent out briefing reports. And towards the end, as you know, the activation was winding down, we, we, I was approached um, for some help and was able to, um, with the help of our partner agencies, provide that kind of assistance. Um, the following year in, in 2020, I think that changed and we were, our, our, um, our role was expanded. And um, Rocio Rodriguez, who is the former director of the COAD and I were partners in the EOC. And I think between us, we probably 
ordered through the county warehouse close to 75,000 masks that were distributed to um, farm workers and other people um, in need um, throughout the county over the course of the, the uh, wall bridge and the glass fires. So um, I expect that the next time we go in because of the, the relationships that's, de that's developed and where we sit in the logistics section, our role is gonna expand. Great, thank you for that. Um, so um, to the rest of the, the COPE leaders and our partners, you know, my purpose in having Jeanette and, and Nathan come today is really for us to understand better what the COAD does and to decide if we want a seat at the table to be a part of the COAD and, and partner um, with them. Um, and I, their committee on preparedness would be a great place for us to to sit, it seems to me. I know, again, Nancy Brown is involved. I know Jeff Peters is involved um, from a CERT perspective. So we have friends that are already there, but I think COPE itself, it would be nice for us to be represented. So um, I noticed that Jeff Peters has his hand raised. Did you have a question or comment, Jeff? Just a, an announcement, a brief announcement, uh, save the date. Um, as you know, Cloverdale has run uh, and CERT has run a fire safety and earthquake expo for the last several years. Um, we are now alternating years and Healdsburg will be running the 2023 fire expo. Um, it'll be on May 6th at the Healdsburg Community Center. Um, and then the following May, May 2024, it'll be back in Cloverdale. And I thought I'd just let everybody know that that's up because a number of you are from the Healdsburg area and I'm sure you're gonna wanna volunteer. That's it. Great, thank you very much. That was um, something that I had in my announcements too. So we're all on the same page. I want you all to know that Jeanette has put all of her contact information in the chat. So um, if you wanna reach out to her individually, she's inviting you to do that. Any uh, questions for Jeanette or Nathan from the group? I'll just say if a question occurs to you all later, you're, you have my email now, please reach out. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, both of you, really appreciate it. Um, and Jeanette, I'll be in touch. Nathan, are you hanging out? I know Jeanette needs to jump off. I've got a four o'clock, Priscilla, so I'm gonna to have to get off as well. Okay, well, thank you again. It's good to see your lovely face, my dear. <laughs> Peace. Bye. All right. I, you know, I, I know the COAD's been around a long time, and I, I've always known that it was there, and felt like, well, you know, we've got people involved in the COAD. Don't really, you know, we'll, we'll know if there's some way we should interface. And I finally thought, well, I better reach out and just learn more. And, and so that's why Jeanette's here. And, and I do think we're so lucky in this county to have so many great resources and this is another great resource for us. So, all right. Um, I am wondering if Dr. Brown has a tip of the month. Yes, I do. Thank you for asking. So um, on our calendar, we're looking at um, fire preparedness and fire prevention this month. Um, and so for the next few months, we have different variations on that theme that we're looking at because of course, this is the time of year when we're all really thinking about uh, the potential for fire in the community and the fire risk, so fair enough. Um, a couple of things I'd like to discuss. First of all, um, at socoemergency.org, you can find a lot of great information that is really from CAL FIRE about um, wildfire readiness uh, and home hardening, um, their ready, set, go package of information. So we have a lot of information there. I know most of you have probably looked at this topic seriously over the last few years. So at this point in time, I'd like to just give you a reminder. Plants grow, things change in your yard. Uh, you buy new things that have different fire tolerances. So take a look, even though you know you've already done it, take another walk around the yard, 
take another walk around the house. Make sure that um, things are as tightened up as you think they are, because um, what you did last year is not exactly the same this year for you. So it's a really good time right now while we still are um, a little ways out from our really, really high risk situation um, to take a look at that and see if you can abate some of that risk that you might have in your area. The other thing I wanted to um, discuss with you is we do have at SoCo Emergency, and I will put the link in the chat, um, a lot of great resources. So if you're building a newsletter for your community and you'd like some um, quick and easy um, ads and things like that to put in, we do have a whole resource page. You're welcome to co-brand that. Put your own um, COPE information on there as well, um, right on it as a, as a co-branded logo. We have a couple of short videos and things like that. If you want to share that to some of your social media pages, you're welcome to do that as well and um, use these in any way that you like. They're strictly there for you to make it really easy for you to provide um, wildfire information to the community. So I wanted to make sure you knew where that was. And I'll put that link in the chat right now and I'll leave it there, Priscilla. Thank you. Thank you, Nance. Always good resources. I know um, Randy Barney does a newsletter for his area. Diana Borges is helping with our communications. And so this is another good resource for us to um, tap into. All right. Ah, Ahmad has a question in the, in the chat about are wood chips bad? Are you gonna take that one on, Nancy? Um, I'm sure someone else here, maybe Linda, could take it much better than I could. Um, but yeah, wood chips are bad because wood chips burn quickly and um, cause embers to rise in the air and can get into trees and attics and all kinds of things that can cause your home to burn from the inside out. Is that right, Linda? Yeah, so um, there's, a, there's a lot of different kind of wood chips. And I just want to say, and actually in Santa Rosa, the red ones, the ones that are dyed red, they found out were highly flammable. And I know they're trying to keep them uh, to keep the moisture in the ground for the plants and stuff. So as long as you have um, small areas with it, if you're using the wood chips, don't use the gorilla bark. Uh, and that you have them separated, you have zero to five feet away from your home, around your home, you have a a, a zero like zero to five feet non-combustible zone, and you have them separated, and you don't have large areas of them. So. They could be used, but they have to be used properly. Great. So um, I know um, one tip that we got um, from either you, Linda, or Carleon when um, we got our house looked at um, was to put gravel next to the house. And I'll just tell you guys, that has been so much easier to care for the vegetation that gets close to the house is really easy to blow off um, and, and other things. Um, just as a uh, just little aside of what we found to be really helpful here at the house. Um, again, it's just really easy to, to clean. Um, all right, uh, why don't we go on? Um, we have uh, three new board members. And so I want to give our new board members a chance to introduce themselves. So um, why don't we start with um, Marianne McBride. Um, Marianne will be brand new to most of you. Um, she has not been um, involved in COPE before, knew what we were up to, I think, um, but has not been involved in COPE. So it's really nice to have fresh eyes um, and um, someone with such skills. So um, Marianne, let me go ahead and have you introduce yourself. Wonderful, thank you so much. It's wonderful to meet everyone. Again, I'm Marianne McBride. I am um, President and CEO of Council on Aging Services for Seniors. And I actually live in Cloverdale and I've lived up there going on 37 years. Um, the reason, um, well, first of all, Council on Aging provides senior services um, in Sonoma County from Werner Park, Katati, all the way up to Cloverdale, the Russian River area um, to Sonoma Valley. Um, and we provide 14 different programs and services um, that uh, for seniors. Um, my interest in COPE was 
um, I, I learned about it actually during the fires. Um, and then at that same time, Council on Aging was responsible for the, um, the uh, implementation of age-friendly Sonoma County. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with age-friendly, but Sonoma County is an age-friendly um, county. Healdsburg is an age-friendly city, as is Petaluma, and I know Windsor, don't know if they have their, um, their actual um, uh, approval yet, but I know they, it's been in process. Um, and age-friendly, basically what it means is for seniors um, to have a great place to grow up and grow old. And it's kind of built on um, seven different principles. And one is community connectedness. There's transportation, housing, um, health and community-based services, employment and financial security, healthy living, and lifelong learning. Um, but where I see the connection is um, community connectedness. And I think that, um, that, that COPE is actually a perfect um, strategy for keeping seniors connected um, in the community and also safe um, during, um, during disasters. So I'm thrilled to um, be on the board to learn more about COPE and to um, essentially walk the talk um, with keeping seniors connected to their community. So thank you. Thanks, Marianne. So Marianne is um, executive, is um, CEO, president of the Council on Aging and in Santa Rosa. I'm, I'm not sure if you had said that or not. I want to make sure yeah. she's on. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And uh, Donna, why don't you go next? Let me find you here so I can highlight you. If you want to say something, you'll go to the top of my list here. <laughs> okay. Here okay, well, are. thank you. Yeah, let me just say that I'm really honored to uh, have the opportunity to serve on the board. I think, um, you know, I'm, I know that I'm really going to learn, you know, a lot about uh, community preparedness and, and so on. Um, I live in Hillsburg. I think someone may have mentioned that earlier. Um, uh, and I've been a member of the uh, Burrell Samantha Court Cope Group uh, neighborhood um, since uh, we were formed in 2020. And um, back then, one of my neighbors uh, found a, a questionnaire online or somewhere that was uh, uh, from Fitch Mountain, the Fitch Mountain group, and uh, that was during the pandemic. So we were all having little meet on the street things uh, periodically. And my neighbor brought this and said, you know, we really ought to get involved in this. And we all said, yeah, you know, that's really a good idea. So we all downloaded and filled out our questionnaires and I became somewhat more uh, visibly involved because it turns out that I was one of only two of the members in my neighborhood who knew how to do a spreadsheet. So, <laughs> so because I did Excel spreadsheet, right? I took the questionnaires and I put them all on the uh, the the data so that we could share it among you know our, our neighbors and and everyone knew how to reach people in cases of emergency and and so on. Uh, so that was in 2020 and 2021. I got a, a little more involved as well. I mean, I had been coming to these uh, leadership meetings, but we had the uh, Fitch Mountain did that um, evacuation drill. And I was very interested in how uh, we were basically communicating with older adults uh, in, in the area. Um, and, and Nancy Brown was wonderful to, to work with to sort of talk through, you know, how we were reaching older adults for the purposes of you know, uh, getting that drill underway. Um, and, and so I thought one of the reasons that I was interested in how this was impacting older adults is that my uh, own professional and academic background is uh, as a gerontologist. Um, after I received uh, my PhD at the University of Kansas, I worked there as a research associate for a number of years. Um, we did a whole variety of projects, mostly to assess the needs of older adults in various counties um, in Kansas through, through the area agencies on aging and through the Kansas Department on Aging. So I've always had you know, a kind of a, an interest in, in community involvement and community organization. Um, and I've always been sort of practically oriented. Um, I came to California in 1988 to take a faculty position at San Francisco State University in the Master's, uh, <clears throat> Master's of Arts program in gerontology there. And one of the favorite things that I did uh, in, my, in my work there was I supervised a lot of students who were developing thesis projects 
uh, where, where they were developing programs and evaluating programs that were uh, in, engaged in the community. And I, I, again, I mean, I really felt that sort of a, a you know, a, a practical, applied, hands-on kind of approach um, was, was something that, you know, was really important to me. Um, after uh, San Francisco, we moved to Arcata, where I was dean for research and graduate studies for a number of years at, um, at Humboldt State University. And then we moved back to, uh, to Healdsburg in 2006. And I took the position um, when I moved back as executive director of the National Association for Professional Gerontologists. <clears throat> that job, which I'm still doing, I could do from anywhere. I mean, it's, a, it's a, an online job and um but you know the place that i love doing it from is sonoma county and and Hillsburg. i mean i can't imagine a you know a more wonderful place uh, uh, to live um and and so this has really given me a, a great opportunity to be involved in in gerontology and live in Hillsburg. but the thing is is that it's a, a it's a national organization so that's one of the reasons why i'm really interested in being on the board and being more involved in this way because you know, I do like the uh, the community involvement uh, aspect. So, uh, on the COPE board, um, I hope I hope that I can, you know, work to focus on older adults who are, after all, a somewhat more vulnerable um, part of our our population uh, and a growing part of the population. Uh, Marianne and I have already had a, a little chat about you know some of the things that we might uh, we might do, and so I'm super looking forward uh, to that. And also, I'm I'm looking forward to perhaps developing new COPE groups and interactions among COPE groups in Healdsburg. Um, um, certainly Linda started to get that effort, you know, off the way, uh, off the, you know, off and running last year. And, and so I think, you know, there's good work to be done in, in that area. And, and finally, I've had a fair amount of experience as a researcher and research administrator uh, in writing grants. I will have to tell you most of them have not been successful, but still, I've had, I have lots of experience. So, you know, if I can use uh, use those skills at all in, in helping the board uh, to uh, seek new funding opportunities, why well, I'm glad to do that as well. So um, I, I think that's it for me. Thank you, Donna, really appreciate it. Um, welcome to the board and we're really excited to have both you and Marianne and, and Diana Borges. So um, Diana Borges, I will turn it over to you. A lot of people already know you, but Maybe they don't know much about your background and um, some, you know, some other things about you. So go ahead and 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 share your reason for being on the board, et cetera. Okay. I'll share those other tidbits. Um, yeah. So I am a geologist by profession. Um, I got my degree from UC Davis. Um, I'm still registered with the state of California, even though uh, I'm not actually uh, professionally doing geology work. It just took too hard to pass that registration exam. I'm not giving that one up. Um, so I quit doing the geology work, which was mostly uh, doing soil and groundwater investigations and cleanups of contaminated sites. Um, about hmm, Oh, 2017, I sold uh, my portion of the company. Um, I had been, there's three of us, we had an environmental consulting firm. We were the employees, we were the everything. So when you're a small company, you, you're you the janitor and the president. So, you know, everywhere in between doing field work. Started out, you know, obviously doing a lot of field work when I was uh, in my younger days, you know, drilling and excavation. So I have a lot of background and, and um, the field work and managing. Um, when I quit, I, I moved into a completely different field. Um, I'm a energy healer and a life coach. So I do energy healing with tuning forks um, for vibrational and sound healing. And I also have my own modality that I've created, which is hard access because we carry a lot of the stuff in our hearts and uh, kind, of, kind of directs our pathways. I've also uh, been published in three books um, as a co-contributing uh, uh, author. One of them is an international bestseller. Uh, I taught Taekwondo for a while. Um, I have one daughter, adult daughter, grown up, uh, been in Sonoma County since 1981. Uh, 
As far as the COPE program and emergency preparedness, um, actually, when I was married, we always had an uh, earthquake kit. Um, but the earthquake kit now has become a whole emergency kit. We've expanded, um, unfortunately. Uh, in 2020, I started the Windsor COPE program uh, here uh, to help that get going. Uh, the end of May, I stepped down for that. And about that point, I, I knew something else was out there. And then I got invited to uh, apply to the board. So um, I still did that jump. And I'm hoping that, you know, I can help with a bigger uh, regional portion for, for COPE. Um, I have been helping Priscilla doing um, uh, with the Facebook uh, adding content to the Facebook and YouTube. Uh, go check out our YouTube channel. We have 34 videos up there now. Some of them are, are shared from other sites like SoCo Emergency and things, but um, I'm trying to create something that's comprehensive for the earthquakes and for uh, uh, general information and uh, disaster preparedness from different places plus all of our stuff. So. Um, all of our videos, the monthly meetings are on there for access. So I, I will take this, edit it, and I will put it onto the uh, YouTube channel. Um, what else? Oh, uh, the last two years I helped uh, Jeff and other people uh, organizing the Fire and Earthquake Safety Expo. So uh, let's see. Oh, I think that kind of covers yeah, an overall of Great. what I do. Yeah. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, so aren't we lucky? Lots of um, different kinds of skills and um, people that have been involved in COPE for a long time and people that are relatively new to COPE. And I think that's a, that's a really big benefit for our board and for our group to have new perspective in and new skill sets coming in. Um, and as you can see, we have a lot of great um, skill sets around working with our older adult, adults, which is really a vulnerable population that we really need to focus on. So I'm looking forward to program development in that area. So, and I see um, lots of welcomes in the chat. Um, you, you guys that are new, be sure and look there because people are pretty excited about you being with us and, and what you bring to our group and to our board. So I just really want to welcome you sincerely and look forward to our board retreat on Friday when we can all um, work together and think about where we want to go as a group and um, as, the, as an organization. All right. So I have um, just a few updates and um, Marsha's going to help me with this because we're going to talk about some of the grants that we have currently. And um, let me get my PowerPoint going here. I just have just a few slides just to kind of summarize for you um, what's going on with COPE. Because I, I think um, I, I might have mentioned this before. I think that um, I know that for myself, I'm so in this work that I don't know what you know and what you don't know. Um, so I think that doing these little reports for you guys is a good way for me to compile the information and get it to you um, visually and verbally, hopefully in a way that's of interest to you um, and that you find um, that you're getting the information that you need. But we also want to know, I mean, if I'm missing something that um, you wish you knew about what we were up to, I certainly want to hear. So let me go ahead. All right, let's see if this works. There we go. All right, oops, let me start the beginning, shall I? All right, I'm going to get there. There we go. All right. So I don't know if you all know that we're a fire safe council. Did you know that? I just want to make sure that you know, because um, no. we don't talk about it very much. 
So I just uh, wanted to let you know that one of the reasons why we got the California Fire Safe Council designation was to help us get funding and have access to some of the state um, some of the state money that was available. And as you know, we expanded our board of directors by three. This meant that we changed our bylaws to include um, a larger board going from seven to nine. So again, welcome. And here are all of our board members. I think you're familiar with all of these spaces. And oh, just one other thing about that. Be sure and go to the website if you want to dig in and kind of understand people's backgrounds. Um, be sure to go to the website. It's on the about page. Um, you'll see the bios for everybody. Uh, you all, I think, got an updated map um, of all of the different code groups in the area, some in progress and some well established. And we were really glad to hear from a number, number of you who felt like you were no longer in progress, but you were established. Um, and for me, that was a wake up call about how I don't know much about what you guys are up to out there. Um, so we need to know more about what you guys are up to <laughs> and, and know that you're not in progress anymore or that you are in progress and you need some help. So just wanted to, to say that. Be sure and let me know um, how we can support you with the best way. And we also have our new website that has, as you can see up here at the top, the leaders tab. And this is what that page looks like from our last in-person meeting. Um, but as you scroll down, you'll see resources and documents that you can download. And that, Diana and I will be working on that and updating it. Um, we actually are doing some updates to the website right now. Um, so you'll see that grow and evolve. And we want to know from you, what is it that you want on that site? What, what's helpful to you? Um, let us know because we want this to be your site. We also have the YouTube channel that, um, that Diana talked about, all the work that she's done um, posting videos to that site. This is a screenshot from a few days ago of our playlist. So you'll see again, um, there is a playlist for our leadership meeting. So you can go there to see meetings that you may have missed. And then of course we have our Facebook page and I noticed some nice comments from Dan about how Diana has increased that content on that page. She and I have both been posting there. And so you're gonna see more and more content on that page. But again, we want to know from you what's helpful. What would you what would you like to see? Um, we are also on the search for our community outreach specialist. So this will be the executive director position, 50% with Hope, and the other 15% with Geyserville Volunteer Firefighters Association and the district, um, Northern Sonoma County Fire Protection District, to um, to do outreach primarily, but also assist with administrative tasks like um, for COPE, it will be helping administer grants, doing reports, keeping track of our budget, those kinds of support activities, supporting our fundraising committee. And a lot of um, the work for Geyserville will be around supporting their fundraising work as well. So you don't have to be a fundraiser, you just need to be able to be on the back end and helping uh, connect with donors and making sure that they're, um, they're uh, making their contribution, as they make their contributions that that is, um, the bookkeeping part of that is done and, and those connections are made, that kind of outreach of connecting with the community is really an important part of this position. So this um, job is posted on the fire district's website. So please send people there. We've also posted it on our Facebook page and we'll continue to do that um, and help us get the word out. We really um, are looking for someone to start as soon as possible. So. Um, just wanted to share with you that the fuels crew had um, completed the work on defensible space. I just did a report for our funder, the um, 
Center for D Disaster Philanthropy. Um, and I, this is uh, one of the slides that I had from, from that presentation that I'm making for them around the, the work that was done. And you'll notice this is a quote from somebody who received the work. They just really appreciated how the, the, um, the fuels crew worked with them and, and the work that they, they did, but the people that they are and how they interact with the community. I thought that was a lovely um, quote. And um, just a couple of pictures kind of before and after pictures of different work that was done as a part of that grant. So this is the $25,000 that we had to do defensible space work. Um, and this is West Side Road and um, the work that was done there. Amazing, huh? The, the other work, um, and I'll let um, Marshall tag on in just a moment here, it, are the three um, fuels management grants that we have. The, the last one is from 2021, um, which was an egg and egg open space grant. That one is almost completed. That covered three different areas. Um, Palmer Creek Road, um, uh, Daniels Ridge, and uh, McLeod Ridge. And that um, the last part is just being completed hopefully in the next couple of months. So that was almost wrapped up. And then we um, were awarded a new Ag and Open Space Grant this year, which is um, well, um, in the area of South um, Brack and Big Ridge. That's another shaded field break. And I'll let um, Marshall talk about that in just one moment. And then the second one is the Cal Fire Grant that we have that's for three different Coke communities. So that covers um, Toyon, Fitch Mountain, and uh, soda rock. And this is roadside vegetation clearing. Um, Marshall, do you, do you want me to stop sharing for a moment and you go, or do you want to do it at the end? What's, what's, what's good? Why don't you just finish out? I was just going to show some maps and talk about this. So I'm Great. good with finishing and then I'll, I'll take the screen for a bit. Okay, cool. Thanks. Um, so we also, as you know, got money for capacity building, and that's the money um, in 2021. That was the money that went towards that defensible space grant that I just talked about and showed pictures of. It also has been really helpful in paying for um, support for grant writing. Um, and we have $38,000 left on that. That is going towards developing a fundraising grant plan, again, grant support, helping us on board. Oh, so much for my spelling, huh? ED uh, onboarding, um, website development, and um, we're more website updates, um, continuing that work on our new website, and also branding. So we're um, going to be branding our um, materials, our, our um, PowerPoint presentations, our letterhead, all of that good stuff. We have somebody who's really good at that. So um, we're doing that work. And then as you hopefully know, 2022, we, we received 80,000 to support our ED coming on board. So we have $40,000 um, for two years that will go to the district to help pay for our half of that position. Future grant opportunities that we're looking at, um, just want you to be aware of these opportunities. And again, give us input on how you'd like to see us writing these grants. First is um, you all hopefully got a chance to meet um, uh, Sharon, who was at our meeting, um, I wanna say three months ago to talk about SPACnet. So um, the, um, um, Oh my God, um, what's it called? Help me, Fire Adaptive Communities Network. There we go. They are great support for the work that we're doing. And it looks like we are in line for a $20,000 grant from them. So I'm thinking that might go towards our outreach work. We are also, um, as was mentioned earlier in the meeting, there's a community wildfire defensive grant defense grant that is being offered by um, the uh, United States Forest Service. And um, so we are looking at that grant as well. 
um, and hope to um, develop that in conjunction with some partners in the community because I think everybody's trying to write for this grant and I, I hope that we can um, figure out a, a way to make that um, palatable for the government in a way that we can all get funding and, and make this um, work best for all of us. So we do want to know what what is it that you want us to seek funding for. So um, we'll have a discussion when we're done here in just a minute about that. Um, this was mentioned earlier as well that um, uh, there is a Healdsburg Fire and Earthquake Safety um, Expo on May 6th. Just want to make sure you get that on your calendar. Um, we have a board retreat this Friday that'll be us getting to know each other, but working primarily on strategic planning and looking at what are the things that we want to accomplish over the next year. So again, we're looking for input from you because our work is all about you and supporting the work that you do. Um, and finally, the Rotary Club of Healdsburg is presenting a film that looks fantastic. If you have a chance to go, please do. If you're comfortable being inside, it's at the Raven Theater. Um, it's called Embers of Awakening. Um, and it's a largely about the Tubbs fire. So um, just to let you know, for those of you that have been affected by the fires, it could be triggering something to think about. But um, it's narrated by uh, Peter Coyote. So if you are as in love with his voice as I am and really appreciate the way that he presents his material, I think that you'll enjoy that film. Finally, um, Diane and I, uh, are very interested in possibly having some kind of a book club. And there is a book that I am just a um, couple minutes from finishing. I've listened to most of my books. It's called Disasterology. And it's written by a woman who has a PhD in emergency management. And I would strongly recommend that you read this book, even if we don't do a book club, because it's pretty, um, pretty in interesting about her perspective on disasters and how prepared we are and what we can do to be better prepared. And then finally, there's a book that Diane came across called Building Resilience. And it is another researcher who studied various communities after disasters, and I think during disasters, and really learned that it was neighbor helping neighbor that really showed how these communities could be resilient, that it was really having those community connections that made a difference. And so those are a couple of books and I'd love to know if you are interested in um, having a book club. Anybody wanna raise a hand if you're interested? I'd love that. And I'll look at that in just a minute. Um, and then how can we, you know, again, we want input from you. We'd love to have you participate in our committees. I think that next month we'll really come back with some tangible ways that you can be involved. Um, we want you to take pictures at your events and send them to us. I know you all are having annual meetings right now. Please send them to us, pictures of, of those meetings. Um, what's going on in your area? I learned um, in putting out the map that somebody was a firewise committee community that I didn't know about. So there's all kinds of things going out there that you guys are doing that I'd love to know about and be able to brag about and share with the group. Um, those are really important. Be sure and like us on Facebook, check out our YouTube um, and let us know again, how can we help you? What's, what's, um, how can we as an organization support you? So that is me stopping my sharing. And so I'm only seeing a couple of raised hands. I'm thinking that maybe a book club is not terribly interesting to a lot of people. Am I right? Where you guys at? I don't see a lot of raised hands. I see Mo and me. And of course, Pat Abercrombie, who's a reader, reader, reader. <laughs> Linda Collister, maybe. Yeah. All right. All right. I also well, have a question, if it's okay. Yeah. 
Thank you, Priscilla. And uh, please forgive me if I'm asking something very obvious. I've been away for a few months on leave. Um, do we by any chance have a shared calendar or where I can see these and other upcoming events? This sounds like a brilliant list and I did not manage to screenshot all of them. Yeah, so that is something we want to do, Moni. Um, we are, I think I mentioned this to you, that we have Google Workspace and we're still getting that hooked up. But my oh, hope brilliant. is that that calendar will then be connected to our website and then you can out you can look at all of our cam calendar events there that sounds brilliant and thank you for sharing that uh, we also um, have activated google suite for for the mill creek one and once you have a calendar if you share a public version of it um, i think we should definitely uh, get it up uh, update it to ours and share it as well so thank you so much for that sure sure thanks money and no question is it's not a good question so please ask the questions because as i said earlier i oftentimes just <laughs> assume you guys know stuff um and i need to know differently so please speak up thank you all right so i'll turn it over to you marshall i think i'm sharing my screen okay. you are this is the map, right, of the, the grant? Yes, this okay. is the Cal Fire grant, yes. Yeah, so I was just going to just review the grants um, and kind of a, another way to take this presentation is that we know about these other grants that are coming online. You know, there's obviously the outreach grants, there's educational grants, um, but if you're looking to do fuels reduction type work grants, um, you know, this kind of some of the stuff that goes into it, which I've talked about before. So. The reason we're successful at getting these types of grants is because, um, you know, it's impossible for me to know every property owner, to, to reach out to every property owner. So really, it's the Coke leaders, neighborhood leaders, whatever it is, going door to door, kind of not necessarily selling the project, but explaining it and giving buy-in. And so that's how these uh, we've been very successful at getting grants. We have a CFPP, and then we've got community champions, community leaders versus a fire department trying to push down a project on a on a community. So this is the, uh, the well, the one and only so far, hopefully the first of many, um, Cal Fire grant that the Cope Northern Sonoma County obtained. Um, and so this shows the project area in pink and the specific roads that are shown in green. This is all how Cal Fire wants the map to look when you submit it. So this is specifically then what roads we're going to do, what's called roadside clearance along, not clear cutting, but the shaded fuel break of treatment uh, to support uh, evacuation and firefighter access and most fires start where people are at, which tends to be along roads and around home. So you can see there it's West Soda Rock, Old Barn Road. So that's a mixture of county road and a private road. So that involved working with the county of Sonoma. Um, something to think about if you're going to work on a county road. Don't don't even ask them about working on a state road. It's a whole other level, um, which I'm getting very aware of. Uh, but the county, we have a great partner in Johannes, who's the in charge of TPW and also general services and also some of the road supervisors who actually live in our communities um, that have been very supportive. So we're not getting charged as a, as a fire just doing the work, charged for traffic control and, and things that other private entities may, may get charged with. So we can keep our costs down and focus on the actual vegetation management work. So if you're involved in a county road, uh, that's, that's a piece of it. Private roads are a little good and bad, a little easier in some ways because it's uh, they're owned by a private or maybe a road association. So that's Old Barn Road. Um, and also West Soda Rock at the very end there, the private portion. And then on, on uh, Fitch Mountain, it tends to be on the south side of Fitch Mountain. We're looking at Madrone Road all the way through and also McDonough Heights um, to the city limits. I don't think Lance was on the call, but uh, to the city limits. So not going that gray or there is, is the perfect city limits. And then we're doing uh, Coyon Drive and also a little spur road off there at the bottom. It's hard to see what Buckeye Trail Road. Um, so that's the Cal Fire grant. So if you're looking at, at doing a fuels type grant, roadside working along a road is kind of a, a low hanging fruit. We also do want to do strategic fuel breaks. Usually those are on ridges. Um, none of these fuel breaks are clear cuts um, or anything, you know, in a burned area, it's a little bit different than so much of this material is uh, vegetation is dead, but we're not looking to do clear cuts. We're actually looking to replicate what a fire would have historically done a low intensity uh, type of fire. So that's the uh, Cal Fire grant. I'll just pause, Priscilla, if you want to add anything or if anybody has any questions about how this came about. Um, 
But I, I, one thing I did say is this is three different communities, three different co communities that built Northern Sonoma County stitched together under one application. So um, about, I believe $400,000 um, for these three projects, these three neighborhoods. So, uh, you know, when we put in for these types of grants, we wanna make sure we're gonna be successful and deliver. So that's all that homework ahead of time. You have anything for so you wanna add? Yeah, I would just say, you know, this came about because conversations we had last fall. Remember, Marshall, we invited Coke communities to let us know if they needed veg vegetation management work done in their areas. And as a result, those three communities came together and said, yeah, we're ready to do this work and this is what we need. Um, and that's what we want to keep doing. So be thinking about that as you go back to your communities. Um, if you need that work, you know, we want to we want to support you in doing that. So. so that that grant I'd shown you was a, a Cal Fire funded grant. So usually the little more higher you go up in whether it's county, state or federal, there's a little bit you know, more requirements, a little more stress, if you will. Uh, so the Cal Fire grant, you know, I think the contract was just signed by the board. We're still waiting on everything getting turned around. So it just uh, adds a little bit of complexity. These two next projects I'm gonna talk about are funded by the County of Sonoma um, from the PG Settlement Funds. And if um, these are easier to apply for, in my opinion, uh, you can actually get face-to-face -face with the people you're working with, uh, to, such as Tim Batchelder from Magnum Open Space. Um, they're usually not big dollar amounts, up to 400,000 is kind of the, uh, around 400,000 is the maximum. Um, last year was really bad timing. It pretty much was right at Christmas when they opened up the grant periods. The county did get a bunch, kind of beat up about, hey, you're, you're ruining our holiday season, having to apply for grants. Um, I could, I, and I would actually agree. Um, but this is something where let's not wait till Christmas or whenever to, to work on this grant. Let's do it ahead of time. So that's why we were successful. This was out of 2021. This is in the Mill Creek community. Um, this area, unfortunately, had been heavily devastated by the Wallbridge fire. Um, so all the, most of this area you see there in the red color had been burned. Um, some of it really bad, like stand replacement type fire. Some of it had just been a nice uh, surface ground, low intensity fire. Um, and so this was uh, utilizing roads, Palmer Creek Road there at the bottom, uh, which is labeled coming off Mill Creek Road, uh, Cloud Ridge Road. And these are all private roads. Um, only Mill Creek is a public road out there and a portion of Wallace Creek. Uh, but Palmer Creek Road, Cloud Ridge Road, and Cloud Ridge at some points turns to a fire road that's getting on top of a ridge. Um, so that's why um, we chose that it. it was strategic and then uh, and, and I'll leave it to, uh, if you want to comment again here on the Daniels Ridge, we named it that ridge, an unnamed ridge, but we named it that ridge because of uh, the Daniels Schoolhouse, which also unfortunately burned in the Wallbridge fire. And that was uh, picking a strategic location. So um, I'll just focus on Daniels because it doesn't follow a road um, and we didn't want to create a road during this work, um, but this would be a spot now and we're taking advantage of a fire that happened so that a future fire we can use this location to have bulldozers go down and maybe not be as destructive where they push, you know, 100 feet, 200 feet wide of bare dirt, create off a lot of erosion. Uh, this would be an area where an air tanker drop um, could, could be more effective as far as the retardant hitting the ground and that maybe not have to use as much retardant. Um, or, I mean, this is just my biased opinion. I'd like to start doing larger scale type uh, broadcast burns, prescribed burns, or a term kind of called fire management, not fire suppression. So right now there's a fire burning in Yosemite it's more of a fire management. They're not, we're not sending tons of firefighters there and putting that, we're kind of letting the fire do its thing um, and, and monitoring. There's risk to that and it's not going to work in every situation, but sometimes we're kind of forced to do that. Like in 2020, we just don't have firefighters. So there's multiple benefits to doing this type of work. Um, unfortunately, if we don't do this type of work ahead of time, we're almost, we default, we're forced to, whatever word you want to use to do this type of work to save communities. And it's very destructive with bulldozers and pushing a bunch of stuff over. Um, and we don't do the best job of uh, cleaning it up. So this is the Mill Creek Shady Fuel Break, Shady Fuel Break uh, network of fuel breaks using Palmer Creek Road, one way in, one way out, dead in. So there's about 15 to 20 homes, taking a ridge road, Cod Ridge Road, to the turnstile fire road, and then also working in an area 
uh, Daniels Ridge to break this uh, Mill Creek, the upper end, the end of Mill Creek Road up into strategic compartments. You might also hear, hear about a word called pods. All these things help in grant writing and you can tie it into a strategic plan. And the CFPP is great, but there's other things going on at the state level and also at the national fire policy level that you can tie this stuff into. So this is uh, another example of a fuel reduction uh, project using strategic shady fuel breaks. Uh, two of them being along, along ridges, one with the road, one without a road. Did you want to add anything there, Dan? And this is um, what we finished up in about three weeks. Right. Um, yeah, I just say, you know, we did a lot of work in the CWPP before the fire, identifying high priority areas. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the fire hit before we could do much, but we had all the pieces in place. Um, we had the studies, the basic biology. We knew where the strategic corridors were for access. Um, so having that already helped. Um, and even though a lot of the thinning probably could be done a lot more efficiently and at lower cost after the fire than before the fire, because frankly, a lot of the biomass and, and the ground cover and the ladder fuel is consumed in most of those areas, but it's still a fire hazard and a risk with a lot of dead standing trees. So. Uh, even after the fire, we're really working to prevent the next one. And as we all know, portions of the county can burn again. And this area protects not only the Mill Creek area, but everything west all the way to the, you know, it, depending on the, the, the direction of the winds we get, you know, could conceivably, there's very few places to stop a westward moving fire with some easterly winds, um, um, except for a few of these ridges and roads uh, systems in the area. So that's why the area was chosen. It had a lot of regional uh, significance. Cool, thanks, Dan. Um, any questions on this project from anybody? Um, the next one I'll show you is the one where, I hope you guys are, are you guys still seeing all the maps on the screen? I'm trying to. Yes. Yeah, this we are. The project, same project as we just talked about, same type of funding um, from the County of Sonoma. Uh, so this is when we took advantage of our, Christ, our Christmas holiday break last year to get, a, get an application in. This is once again, we had willing property owners that brought the project forward, so we had commitment that we could deliver. Um, there's always dynamics and there's dynamics that are ha that happens on the property owners here as far as becoming sick, um, but I'm pretty sure we're still gonna be able to get permission at some point. Uh, this project, you know, was broken up into certain into, into segments for the purposes of completing projects. And so right now we've uh, finished section six down here at the bottom, coming off Mill Creek Road. This is a different type of map. So you guys aren't seeing the topographic features, but you're seeing what's called LIDAR data. This is more or less a ridge coming off the South Big Ridge, also devastated in the Wallbridge fire. Um, and, and using ranch roads, an old dozer line here from the Wallbridge fire. Um, to create a line of defense between the dry, Southern Dry Creek Valley, the city of Hillsburg, and the Mill Creek community. So to keep a fire on one or, one or the other side of this ridge. Uh, and it also provides a secondary egress for some of these folks too. Uh, so this over here is the West Dry Creek community, Brack Road, Pine Ridge, Jack Pine are behind this, uh, this text box here. Uh, but basically coming off Mill Creek Road, using private roads, driveways, vineyards, uh, creating that shady fuel break, limbing up trees, uh, and following it off the time to, to Big Ridge. And Big Ridge Road had been treated uh, by a previous grant the fire district obtained uh, prior to Wallbridge. Uh, so tying it into that, there's also been some logging up there. So just trying to give, give ourselves as firefighters just some tactical advantage before the emergency, uh, promoting people getting out, reducing the intensity of fire so they don't know as destructive. Um, you know, which, which helps with everything. So this is another grant that uh, it'll be done by the end of calendar year 2023. But, you know, because of what the community connections and the property owner connections, we're able to communicate well with the property owners, meet them on site. Um, you know, we're not subbing, subcontracting stuff out to multiple different subcontractors and, and losing local control. And so um, everyone, ideally, my goal, our goal as Coach Board is that it this turns out as a win-win for everybody, and that um, hopefully into the future, uh, these property owners can, can hopefully do some part, contribute to help maintain it as well. So this is our current uh, County of Sonoma funded, funded uh, uh, grant project. So this is something that may be applicable in one of your communities, something maybe to look at, but another, but another thing. Um, 
I'm going to slide another map over. Can you guys see this bigger map? Yes. Cal Fire logo. Okay. And I don't know if there's any questions on the previous um, grants or anything, because I just want to, well, we're coming up on, I don't want to go in our five, eight minutes, because I thought we were actually going to end early today for some of what we did. Um, <laughs> No Marshall just really went there anyway. Um, yeah, Marshall just really. Got to, I'll do it real quick. Um, no, no, I, no. There was a question. I'm sorry. There was a question about um, when the work on the Cal Fire grant will start. We're talking winter, right? Because we haven't even gotten that yeah. completed yet. Correct. Yeah, just so January the earliest. Okay. Great. We thanks. Have County's new off our protection plan. We have some of our communities have smaller of our protection plan. I'm also on the fire safe Sonoma board, as is Jeff Peters. The model we're going to probably go to in the future in the county of Sonoma is there'll be a countywide 2 PP, and then each community will do a fire wise. Uh, really, what we're looking at is we're really looking at taking information and, and, and identify, uh, identifying projects and mitigation measures versus having to, I hate to say this in a bad way, Go through all the other stuff that's a part of the CPP. We can get communities together to do a self-assessment of their homes, their defensible space, addresses, water sources, whatever it may be, vegetation management, and then develop projects. So I think it's going to be a better way to do business in the future, and it's what the county of, of Marin's been doing historically. So prior to the the various maps that are online, is you know in my mind I started breaking up. The county, and I call this the northeastern area of the county. Uh, uh, so we've got Napa County, Calistoga on the lower, I think it's the lower right for everybody. Maybe it's the lower left, sorry. It's lower something. And then you got Mendocino County up here to the top. And this whole area, going from Mendocino County above Colville, where we had the pine fire a couple of weeks ago, all the way down to Calistoga, you know, and then you look at fires like the Valley Fire, the Kincaid Fire, the Pocket Fire, the Wallbridge is over here. Um, this is the big Kincaid. And this is only the last you know, 10 years is this is where our threat seems to come from these offshore wind events. And then I started coloring in some of the larger property owners and just to see what we could maybe go out and, and try to start developing projects and then divide this area up into uh, planning parcels and planning blocks, if you will, like Ida Clayton Road to the county line, Ida Clayton Road to Bridge Ranch, Bridge Ranch to Pine Flat, Pine Flat to Geyser, Geysers to Cloverdale Geyser, Geysers to Pine Mountain, Pine Mountain to the county line. Is, is tie this into a big plan. So this takes a lot of work with residents, hope groups. It's a lot of work with the agencies to get them on board. But if we can go develop this level of collaboration, put projects together, um, it, that, it's a tremendous amount of uh, homework done ahead of time uh, before going into the grant process. So I'll just wrap it up. Let's do our homework now. Let's talk to property owners who want to get grants together. Let's you know hold workshops. Maybe we can do leadership meetings or. Uh, Set aside some some uh, some work meetings to talk these things out. I can put you in contact with your fire officials. Not everything here is in the Northern Sonoma County Fire District. Not everything is Cal Fire jurisdiction. Uh, so you need to think about involving other agencies as well. So anyway, uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Priscilla. And I'll stop sharing the screen. Thank you so much, Marshall. Um, it's this map was really cool to see um and that you have some ideas based on fire history and um knowing the area um where yeah look at that some um some ideas there about um our various and there are a lot a lot of coke communities in those areas right yeah and this is something if you guys get a chance, I can send you a link look, to go to the County of Sonoma, Sonoma's Community Law Protection Plan. We need to get our projects put in there and identified so it's not like these aren't secret plans either. So we don't duplicate efforts in some of these areas. So I've tried to put everything that I have in there to get it ranked too. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, so I wanted to um, give folks a, a chance to ask questions, to speak up if you have um, some work that you're interested in getting done in your communities. Um, let's hear from you. We've been talking too much. I had a question about the CWPP USDA Forest Service grant and um, I haven't had a chance to fully run through the uh, the scope of uh, what's applicable, but um, 
regardless of how I'm, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to ask what entities can, can or should be the primary um, applicant for that. Would it be Northern Sonoma County COPE? And if so, which individual COPE groups or projects, you know, would rise, you know, to the, you know, what, what's the, is there a plan or a, a process in place to try and identify um, uh, where to work within the county or who the primary applicant should be for that grant since it seems like it it's larger more funds um, and a lar larger scope than what we've been used to dealing with right so um thanks for that question dan so um Marshall and I saw this grant quite a while, a few weeks ago when it first came out and really jumped on it and really wanted to be involved in it. I attended the webinar, so I have a sense of what this entails. It is a big federal grant. It's over five years. There are different components to the grant. Basically, one is developing a CWPP and supporting people in that process. That's not really what we're interested in since the county is developing one and many of us have CWPPs already. Um, another big portion of it is mitigation work, fuels work. And because we have a bunch of funding already going in that direction, I went for the third, you know, I'm thinking the third category, which is really the outreach and education part of it, and really wanting to do work that supports our, our COPE leaders, again, in developing that toolkit that we've talked about, making sure that we have good communications with you, and also really, really diving into our vulnerable residents. And our focus, of course, with the wonderful board members that you just learned about today is going to be seniors in developing a program and work that will support our seniors. So that's the way that I've envisioned kind of COPE at this point, but I want your input. This is Priscilla and Marshall kind of tossing around some ideas and, and um, we, we do want to hear from you. The piece about what's the best way to go about it, I'm still navigating that. Jeff knows too that, you know, he's interested in applying for it too. If we, can write something together if, if Jeff's work that he wants to do in Cloverdale has to do with outreach and education, it should be all in one place in my mind. Um, you know, same with you, Karen, you know, you're in our district, let's do it all together if we can. Um, I'm also interested in what Fire Safe Sonoma is doing and I'm interested in what the county's doing so that we don't all apply for the same thing and end up competing against each other. So we still have a lot of information collection to do, I think, in figuring out who we might best partner with. Because this is a big grant that requires a lot from us in managing it because it's a federal grant. I mean, I've spent a week already trying to get um, a, a unique identity number so that I can get federal money. I mean, it's, it really takes a lot of work and, and Donna's laughing because she knows totally what I'm talking about. So, um, and Jeff as well. So, you know, we're, that's kind of where we're at right now, but um, Jeff, you probably want to say something. Um, yeah, there's a lot of possibilities. Um, if you, if you put the outreach part of it under Cope Northern Sonoma County, but then you put the mitigation parts under individual COPEs as sub project um, implementation people, um, you could literally put several COPEs together. We, we developed and submitted to FEMA uh, a $7.4 million request pursuant to our CWPP for the entire Cloverdale Fire Protection District. Um, and we still would not use up the $10 million cap on those types of grants. So there's room for multiple participants. And I'm pretty sure that Marshall and Jason Jenkins, our fire chief in Cloverdale, could find a way to scale down the 7.4 million so that everybody could fit under the same tent. Um, and, and we've already done a lot of work 
on what needs to be done in a mitigation sense. So, I, Daniel, I'm I'm assuming you're thinking more mitigation and more funding for more mitigation, as well as outreach. I think there's room for all of that. Sounds good. Um, Karen, um, are you still online? I was curious if the county had or the different fire districts were considering uh, um, I, looking at some of the mitigation funds. Yeah, so I am still online. Thank you. I just had to um, answer a question from the chief behind me there for a minute. Um, yeah, so we looked at it. We had a quick little meeting today and talked about um, kind of how we wanted to pursue, you know, writing this up and looking at what kind of mitigation projects we want to work on. And we also, Priscilla talked about, you know, the doing some benevolent work, working with the, those more at risk populations that cannot, um, you know, kind of help themselves in, in, in this. So definitely helping out with that senior population or, or groups that don't have the funding or um, support from their community, right, um, to work on something like this. So. I wanted to reach out to, to you because I already knew that you guys were working on some of this and kind of how, um, you know, Chief Tuberville, Tuberville said, you know, it really should be, I, I like that idea, kind of a larger project with different groups coming in and then those smaller projects, right? So larger project getting the funding um, and then working with the smaller groups. So I just didn't want to reinvent the wheel, wheel and do something that others have already done or that I didn't want to um, overlap on projects as well. So I, yes, we're interested in working together collaboratively however we can. So I know this is a bigger deal. We have, I believe it's October 7th to submit. So that's something that um, hopefully we can work on all together and continue to do. Great, thanks, Karen, yes. So um, maybe we can get a group together with Fire Safe Sonoma, and I don't know if Carol owns up to something. Um, I I suspect that the mitigation work might be a larger um, uh, area um, to get covered and focused on. Again, those of you that are in Coke communities that need this white work done, I really encourage you to let us know what that looks like in your area and. Let us know what your needs are. Um, I have something to say. <clears throat> I'm wondering if our community, if the work that needs to be done in our community is too small uh, or if it would uh, qualify. Um, Thursday, I'm having a site visit by uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And um, I've invited Marshall, <laughs> Chief Turbeville and Chief Jenkins, and I'm, I'm hoping one, one of them will be able to come. Um, and also the uh, city of Cloverdale is coming, uh, UC Extension Forestry Advisor, Mike uh, Jones is coming, and the HOA. And we're going to go around and look at our open space areas because we have a lot of vegetation that's just grown up over 20, 30 years, 25 years, um, with no, almost no management, it's supposed to be natural and self-sustaining and, and part of it is a creek and part of it is just, a, um, an area that's that very high fire hazard severity zone and people are starting to have problems with their insurance and, um, and so, I, yeah, I, Susie, I think, yeah, we do want to know about something. your, yeah, sure, sure. It may not be for, you know, it just depends upon how things unfold. If we have a big mitigation project that we're doing in Cloverdale, this totally makes sense to include this as part of that. Um, most of them are know, on the ridges or in the roads and we have underground wire, you know, electric and big roads and, and no big wind events. And so we're considered to be yeah. more moderate, but we have the high fuels. And so, right. and it's just getting bigger and bigger, yeah. And bigger. Yeah, I get you. And old people, yeah. a lot of old people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. So that's good. Thank you for speaking up. And I, I think that's- um, I didn't know if I should, yeah, if I should say anything about grant opportunities or not during this meeting. And I, Marshall, I would just wait and see what they have in mind. And maybe they've already, they're already working on something that you guys could be included in. But certainly, yeah. let's keep the dialogue open. 
Okay, thanks. Yeah. So we only have just a couple minutes left. Um, Diane Urban, did you have anything that you wanted to share with the group? Okay, anybody else from the board that, or Diana, are you raising your hand? Yes. Yeah. Um, we had talked about um, asking help with the updating the logos for the communities. Oh yeah, thanks. Go ahead. Okay. So um, as you know, we are now communities and not citizens. So the logos that we had drafted are outdated. Um, we are trying to do that in house as opposed to paying someone. And I, we are asking for help if anyone can do drafting for it. So I took the Windsor Cope one in Photoshop and just put a layer over it and then put the text another layer over. So it's, it's fairly simple if anyone out there has that capability. Um, the other thing that we, we really need to know is um, we were given a lot of files last time and I didn't even use half of them. So those, we need to know who wants it updated. So we'll prioritize. And then also what type of files do you need? Do you want the JPEG, PNG, PDF? I mean, what, what are you really using? We're not, I don't wanna create stuff that you're not gonna use. So it's a kind of a twofold. What type of files do you need for your logos? And if there's anyone out there that can help do it. If we could have the vectors, that'd be great. I, I didn't hear you. I kind of cannot, what? Apologies, there's a ginormous machine trying to flatten uh, gravel right outside my window oh. right now, sorry. <laughs> so uh, I'd say uh, if we could have vectors and uh, in a PNG copy, that would be fantastic. Are you guys using just the uh, white background version? We have in the past, if you have a clear background one, uh, that would be brilliant for, for slides as well. Um, I don't know if you have like a repository with all of them or if I'm asking too much, but yes, thank you so much. At least the white background will be great. Okay, so no green or whatever that color was, just white. Yeah, and there was a green background, Moni, yeah. Okay. Cool, yeah, same with me. I don't use the green background. Um, all right. Well, it's 501 and you know how I am about time. So I really want to respect your time and thank you all for coming to the meeting. Um, I Can you please send me some emails with information that you want me to present at the next meeting? Are there people that you want to come? Is there something burning education wise that you would like to have discussed? please let me know because I, I try to be creative and get these meetings um, up and going for you, but I need your input. So send me an email. All right, take care everyone. Okay, I was just gonna say something real quick. Uh, the lightning, you guys, it might get hyped up this week. It doesn't look like to be a real threat. So just uh, try to stay calm um, with the lightning predictions that are gonna probably happen. Thank you. Ah, we <laughs> love that advice. Staying calm is always good. All right, everybody. And Karen, um, email me offline and let's uh, let's set up a time, okay? Absolutely. All right. Take Thanks. care, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you.